Welcome everybody to Bud Bears and Brews. My name is Brian and today we're recapping the 16th session of our Tomb of Annihilation campaign. Uh, while talking about that, I'm going to be drinking a lovely Circus Boy by Magic Hat. Um, I think Magic Hat's pretty much nationwide at this point. Um, it's what, Vermont or New Hampshire beer, I forget which one. Uh, but all their beers are pretty good and Circus Boy is their Heffenweizen, so can never go wrong with those. So starting off, you guys are uh, starting off in Omu still. Uh, this time you're in front of a shrine, and this shrine has all sorts of uh, carvings and statues and whatnot uh, related to the Kamadan, the cat jaguar type creatures with the snakes coming off their uh, their shoulders. And so you guys are, first thing you do is you look over at the little itty bitty, uh, I say little itty bitty, it's now I think I described it the size of a small dog. Uh, common in cub that you guys have with you, um, you know, kind of wave it around in front of the, uh, the place and um, nothing magical, mystical happened at that. So here's the thinking though, right? Uh, walk up at the door. The door doesn't seem to be locked, but uh, the door is super heavy. So um, poor card could not open the door by himself. Uh, and as he's trying to open it, trying to get a couple other people uh, up there, uh, he looks off to the sides, and there is Commodant on each side of him, a living Commodant, not a statue of Commodant, uh, all growling, hissing, and being very angry kitties uh, with him. So you guys try to figure out, how do we please these things? Uh, one of the things that um, this area said it was uh, something along the lines of... Um, Fight with honor and be brave, something along those lines. So I don't remember the exacts, but it's something dealing with bravery and honor. And a lot of the reliefs showed um, this uh, uh, the common training all these warriors with spears. And uh, so you guys are like, you know what? Let's go ahead and try to offer these commandants a spear and try to see if that does anything. No, they didn't. Uh, they didn't really know what to think of your gesture. They kind of backed away, looked at you guys a little bit, and Fitz came up, and you guys were like, oh, shit, Fitz is going to come up, he's going to go a little crazy, uh, but no, he blinded one of them, and uh, from there, the Commodans uh, shot out their, what's it called, sleep breath, cone breath, uh, sleepy cone, whatever you, <laughs> we'll call it sleepy cone, shot out their sleepy cone breath uh, at you guys, um, and only one person fell asleep, I think it was Sai. Yeah, I think Sai fell asleep from it, and uh, they the Covenants went into a defensive position at that point. You guys didn't attack them. They didn't attack you. Uh, eventually, you guys decided, uh, I think Car, yeah, Car dropped a fog cloud, made it very hard to see, uh, and the Covenants ran off without further issue. Um, from there, you guys got into the, the actual shrine, and everybody went in minus... Uh, the translator went in with you, or, uh, Orvix, and um, River and Flask stayed outside. So you guys went inside, started taking a look around. There's this like a fighting pit down below, uh, cut into the ground like 20 feet down. There's an empty pedestal on the far side. There's a relief uh, on the far side as well. Once again, the Commandant training folks. Um, and then there's four statues in this uh, area and they're all standing or standing with uh looks to be like they should be holding spears but in their spear hand where you think a spear should be there's nothing there you guys go heading down a little bit and you see that there is this trio of levers as you guys had uh went down some stairs and it kind of looped back around and you could see that like hey that leads into the fighting pit there's this trio of levers you guys open up uh you fling one of them, you hear the far end of the fighting pit gate open, and you hear some thumping, 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 and in comes a clay warrior statue. And so you guys kind of discuss, like, hey, who, how are we going to do this? What's the plan? And Leorn decided, you know what? I'll go in. I'll go ahead and give him a, a good old what for with my weapons. Um, yeah, so uh, side note, we did have a full table there, all seven players. I did make Jose stay at level 5, though, even though the rest of us are at level 6 for uh, doing the bitch move of pulling, uh, th throwing off a trap and then not coming the next session. So that was his his uh, punishment. So uh, the Orin goes in there and gate closes. 
he you know does a little gladiatorial salute to the thing. The thing kind of acknowledges him, and Leorn goes and charges up on him. This room is small. The, the gladiatorial pit it's you know twenty feet down into the ground from the top level. So you guys are down in the you know people down at the bottom are twenty feet down from them, and then there it's like fifteen by fifteen. Uh, you know so starts off, and I think three rounds went by where uh, Jose just had horrible dice luck. I think he rolled like. First round was like two fours. Like he, he didn't hit this thing for uh, literally six attacks. When he did hit, he finally crit it. Uh, but this thing absolutely laid into him. Uh, luckily, Fitz, Tim, uh, Evil Tim playing Fitz, uh, lit it up with a Ray of Enfeeblement, I think was the spell, that caused some half damage to it. And it... Um, I forgot to roll the saves every time to see if the half damage was no longer uh, applicable, but whatever. Um, eventually, you guys decided, you know what? Pavic's getting, or not Pavic, Leorn's getting a little lit up. Uh, this fight's going out a little long. We're wasting a lot of resources keeping uh, Leorn saved up. Because you guys thought that like, this kind of had to be like a one on one fight. But once you saw like how sturdy this thing was, you decided there's no way Leorn can take this thing down. Forgive me about that. And so you guys started lighting into it. Uh, I think at the end, um, Cy wound up jumping down in the pit as well from the top side. Uh, Car was shooting lightning from up top. Uh, Barlow was shooting chromatic orbs, I think, at one point. Uh, Fitz wasn't doing much offensive damage. Um, there wasn't using much spells because he was saving him for a couple other things. Uh, later down the line there, but he was using um, you know, like uh, cantrips and whatnot, and eventually this thing went down. I, what wound up happening is uh, Fitz wound up throwing his uh, pickaxe into the arena, and Leorin grabbed the pickaxe and crit the thing, and it just down it went. Down goes Frazier, right? Uh, you guys pull Leorin out because Leorin was not looking so well. He sits out, um, and you look over at the, these uh, switches, and there's you know some old Omoon in there. Um, Barlow doesn't quite know what they say, so you guys get Orvix down there, and he reads off that their name. So I think I named one. Uh, I don't recall what we called the first one, but the next uh, there was one that was named Sam, and there's one that was called Alex and Billy. So the next one you went for was Alex and Billy, and you got... Uh, Oric went in there and Fitz went in. <clears throat> so kind of you guys were thinking like, Let, let's tag team this thing, uh, and get in there. And so they got in, closed the door. The uh, two Alex and Billy came in. This one went quite a bit quicker. Uh, I think part of it was you guys kind of understood like, hey, it doesn't matter if we attack from the outside. The being noble and that kind of stuff. Eh. You know, or being honorable, like the the clue kind of gave you guys isn't a big big deal. Uh, you guys weren't being like cheating or anything like that. You guys were just shooting into the pit. You know, they didn't do so much damage to you guys that time around as they did to, um, as the first guy did to uh, what's it called, to Leorin. I think part of it was because um, you kind of had an idea of their tactics. There was a bless that went on beforehand, so the uh, shield bash, you guys weren't getting knocked down on the ground, so I wasn't getting the uh, advantage attacks on you guys and so on, that kind of stuff there. Um, that one there wasn't so so rough, um, but as that fight was going on, Navarre up top was kind of messing around with the pedestal up there trying to uh, determine what was going on. Barlow found a couple things like, hey, here's this thing, uh, here's this piece that might slide up it might uh slide forward i don't know but there might be the cube underneath there but i'm not going to mess with it but navarre had no issue messing with it he goes and he slides the thing back after he determines it slides and it set off a trap um trap was really minimal though this uh this trap wasn't so bad i think all in all he walked away with like 10 poison damage and it's a one and done spray type trap uh so that wasn't so bad, but it did cause the door outside to slam. So you guys were effectively trapped in there until you guys got the cube or found some other way out. Uh, yeah, so you guys finished taking down the duo, and you guys then 
backed away, kind of regrouped. I think you took a short, yeah, you took a short rest between there, and then you went, were like, hey, uh, let's figure out who's fighting Sam. And you're like, everybody, let's just pile into the room, and we will just go to town on Sam. And so you flick the lever. Everybody's in the room. Your guys' port colors raise, or closes. The far one raises, and you don't hear like this typical thudding that you hear before. And instead, you see what looks to be a statue or, or like a clay statue of a little kid wearing his dad's armor with his dad's spear. It is really fucked with you guys because you guys are like, oh, dude, I don't want to. What are we supposed to attack this kid? Are we not? Can we ask the kid for a spear? You're asking the translator how to ask for the spear. The kid's like doing like the weird like head to the side, like acknowledging that you're saying something but not understanding. Even when you like did the old Omoan, he's like, mm mm. And so you decided, you know what? Uh, eventually, I think Leoran. Decided, I'm just gonna bite the bullet and cleave cleave into him. He hit him and down he went. He's a one shot guy. Um, and as Aaron kind of guessed, I did this partly to fuck with you guys, uh, and then partly because this fight was dragging on, or this shrine was dragging on. Um, so what I did for this guy, uh, the the Sam one, was I gave him one hit point and then I literally tripled his damage. So if you guys didn't hit him and kill him that first round, he would have had three attacks with, what was it, um, three attacks with 6d8 per attack or something like that. He was going to really lay into you guys and teach you guys, like, hey, you know what, just, you know, teach every, treat every challenge as a challenge. Uh, from there, you guys were able to successfully uh, find the cube. The cube was further down the hall where the uh, clay statues were coming out, and when you guys got the cube, the door opened up, and when the door opened up, Flask's dead body was at the door, there's blood all around, and looks like he was kind of tore up by a comedon. But uh, Navar took a look and actually found that there was an arrow in him as well. So they're guessing that an arrow killed Flask, and then uh, a comedon came in and, you know, had a little light snack. Uh, there was no sign of River and no sign of the Comet and Cub to be found. You guys uh, followed some pa uh, followed some uh, paths, footprints, whatever you want to call it, leading away. They are clearly of Tabaxi. Um, there's no sign of the Comet and uh, like the little Cub um, tracks going on there. So you guys like you follow that, and it's heading across this big river. And across this river, there is a uh, there is this fallen tree, 100 feet long. You can walk two across. You guys got about halfway across when arrows started flying at you guys, and that's where we stopped. Um, wasn't exactly the best place for me to stop. Honestly, I would have liked to not stop there, but I was a dumbass and shut down my computer because I've been using my computer for, via Fantasy Grounds uh, to do the NPC stats instead of doing my typical sheets like I had because I've fallen behind on that. And then um, I forgot my DMG in the car. And it was like, ah, I don't want to go out and back and get it and come back in. So we stopped right there. Um, all in all, it started off fun. Um, and then combat really dragged on and on and on. If I would run this combat or this shrine again, I would definitely change some things up. Um, I changed actually a lot of it up. Like Each of the fights was supposed to be one-on-one-on-one. -on -one -on -one. That wasn't supposed to be the case. So the first fight was a solo fight. The second fight was a dual fight with shared HP. And then the third fight was that Mega, you know, hit it once and it's gone, but it hits you, you're in trouble. I also would have got a little bit better clues that the fights didn't have to be one-on-one -on -one and honorable. Um, the, the book had a couple different things, like if people from outside interfered, but even if you guys were at, like, level 7 or something like that, and it... And if a one-on-one -on -one fight, this thing, those guys would have absolutely demolished anybody one-on-one. -on -one. So I, I did some things to kind of change it around and make you guys, uh, you know, kind of understand things there. So not my favorite shrine, um, but it's okay. We're past it. I think we're moving on to some better stuff. So see you guys on Wednesday. Bye.